Okay, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is inclined planes, okay? Um, so inclined planes have a lot to do with forces because there's a lot of forces that are involved in this. So let's just look at this. All right, so we have this inclined, inclined plane like that, um, and it's at an angle theta, okay? So we have this box that's on the inclined plane, um, and we have to figure out a couple of things. We, we know that the weight of the object is always going to be vertical. The weight is always going to be in the same direction as gravity, so this is going to be the vertical direction, perfectly straight up and down. Weight is always up and down, even if the object is angled like that, the weight is still going to be vertical, uh, perfectly straight, okay? So we know weight is like that, um, and one thing that we have to do is we have to know what the normal force is. So what exactly is the normal force? So F of N, okay, so we have this little triangle right here that we have to draw. It's just something that we have to remember. We always draw it with theta like that, um, and we draw the hypotenuse is going to be the weight. And we draw the, the normal force is going to be that same long portion right there. Um, you guys kind of have to just figure that out how you would draw that on your own. But we know that the normal force is always going to be the weight times um, cosine theta. And then the parallel. So this parallel is going to be the force that is actually exerted on the object because gravity will push it down. Um, and we know this is weight times sine of theta. And you can remember this however you want, if you just want to memorize that, that's okay too, um, but you probably should be able to draw this little triangle because it'll, it'll help a lot on the test. All right? um, so the parallel force is what actually causes this thing in motion. So it causes the motion, and this normal force is just what we need when we, when we need to know the normal force, especially for friction. All right? So we'll see examples later. Okay, so in this one we have a 5 kilogram box slides down a frictionless 30 degree ramp. Okay, what is the acceleration of the box? So the first thing you want to do is you want to draw this inclined plane. And so it's 30 degrees. Okay, and we have this 5 kilogram box like that. So what is the acceleration of the box? And so the acceleration is always the acceleration that's going to be parallel to the inclined plane. Or if it's on the horizontal, it will be parallel to that ground, all right? So what do we need? So we know that this is frictionless, so that helps, all right? Um, so let's just draw a little triangle like this. So we know that this, um, that's parallel to the direction of the inclined plane, is going to be what causes the actual uh, motion or causes the acceleration. And we know that this is weight times um, sine of theta, right? Because sine is opposite, opposite over hypotenuse. So we know this is weight times sine theta. And that will be the force that causes motion. So we call, can call this F of M. The force that causes the motion or force of horizontal, whichever one you want to call. Um, and so this equals the acceleration. So mass times acceleration uh, by Newton's second law. Okay? So we plug this in. Weight times sine theta equals mass times acceleration. And acceleration equals W sine theta over the mass. All right? And remember before, um, weight equals mg, so I'll write it up here. Um, A equals mg sine theta over m. All right? And if we cancel this out, we'll see that the m's don't even matter. So the acceleration equals g sine theta, and it's 10 times sine of 30. So this would be 5, because remember sine 30 is 1 half. Right? So we know that the net acceleration of the box will be 5 meters per second squared. And we notice that the mass of the object made no difference. If this could have been a 100 kilogram box, it could have been a 1000 kilogram box, it would have never made a difference because it was frictionless. If there was friction, that wouldn't be the case. But in this case, friction, frictionless makes it so that the mass won't even matter. So the next thing I want to look at is uh, pulleys. So what are pulleys? So if we have a pulley like this, or we can also have pulleys like this, okay, there's really not much to these. Um, only thing that we need to notice is that the tension is constant throughout any type of rope. For, for the MCAT purposes, the tension is going to be constant no matter what the rope is. So um, the tension in this rope it's going to be the same on this side as on this side. It's going to experience the same type of tension. Just like this, the tension here 
is going to be the tension here. Um, and so this is very important because for questions like this, uh, we're always going to be um, having two equations and two unknowns. For example, like this equation or this question, um, say we were given a problem where we had this pulley like this. And it was asking us, okay, um, we know that this mass is a certain uh, mass, so we'll call this M1, and this is M2, okay? And there's no friction in here, um, um, but this has a weight and it's, it's being pulled down. It has some acceleration down, and they want us to find that acceleration, right? Okay, well, we have a couple ways to do this. So, what we see is that we'll have two free body diagrams. Okay, so this M1 has some weight m1g and has some tension f of t and it has a net acceleration of a okay and this m2 okay it's moving it has no friction so it's have no um force in the opposite direction it'll just have this ex um this tension force and it'll have um an acceleration all right so what do we do with this Okay, so we know in this case f of t equals what? Mass times acceleration, right? Because it's the net, because there is no difference. There is just the net uh, force will equal mass times acceleration. And in this case like that, we see that m1g minus f of t equals m1 times a. Okay, so if this question was asking what is the acceleration, okay, we have two equations and two unknowns. That means we can solve it, because right now, f of t is an unknown, a is an unknown, we don't know either one, but all we know are the masses. So what we can do in this case, is we say f t is mass two times a, so that's fine. And in this case, f t equals m1 g minus m1 a, okay? So what do we do with that? We can set these to be equal to each other. Right? That should make sense. F T, um, if they're both equal to each other, we can put the other sides equal to each other. And so M1 A plus M2 A equals M1 G. And if we manipulate this a little bit, so the net acceleration is going to be M1 G over M1 plus M2. And we know that both of them have to have that same acceleration because if you didn't, uh, one object would be pulling the other and you'll just have tons of slack or it'll be physically unimpossible um, If you had any other way so the acceleration is going to be constant throughout the whole thing and the tension is going to be the same in the entire rope so for these questions the only thing that they're really going to ask is what's the acceleration or what's the tension force so I didn't use numbers specifically because it's very simple you just find out what you want to name these variables and then plug in your values later on very, very simple to these questions, and we'll probably see those later.